Game design is a truly fascinating process. In the beginning, everything feels almost euphoric. It's like you're drinking unicorn giggles. You're having fun experimenting, prototyping, and bringing basic ideas to life in a flash. But after a point, every game's progress slows to a sludgy, agonizing crawl. As aspects of the game start to become more refined, with art coming in, mechanics getting added, tweaked or removed entirely, and systems getting finalized, more and more thought needs to be put into every step of the process. The euphoria stops, and a general sense of crankiness sets in. Things can get even crankier when we forget about an incredibly important department during our early development phase, audio. Audio is rarely considered early on in a game development project, and thus the hardest breaks are applied to the audio team during this slow, sludgy, but important phase of development. At this point, it becomes clear just how wildly complex audio can be in a project, even on the simplest of games. And it becomes a daunting process to think of how you're going to program in every single system that's needed to make sure the audio does what you need it to do beyond the absolute basics. This is, of course, piled on top of everything else you need to consider for your game to be a polished, finished product. For example, you may have realized that you'd like your game to perhaps be balanced well in terms of volume levels and to never get too noisy. Or you may want to have your music transition from one piece to another seamlessly without hitching. Or maybe you want to accomplish the incredibly common task of filtering out the entire soundscape when your character's health is low. Of course, it's possible to code all these tools and systems from scratch, but the time investment can be substantial, especially if you want your audio tools to have a user interface that your team will actually want to use and interact with. The good news is you don't need to make your own complex and customizable game audio playback system from scratch. Let me tell you about FMOD and WISE. For anyone unfamiliar, FMOD and WISE, among other similar tools, are classified as middleware. These sorts of tools act as a bridge between audio designers and the game engine. Essentially, they let the audio creators design and control how their music and sound behaves without necessarily needing to code it all in by hand. They also expand what most game engines' audio systems can do on their own. Not only that, but they put more control into the hands of your composers and sound designers, letting them make more decisions in terms of audio, taking a lot of mental load off of your plate. But perhaps the most important case I can make for using these sorts of tools is that you're not just hiring people onto your team to make stuff, you're hiring them to iterate. No one in games makes anything spot on correctly the first time. Things change, large swaths of the game are thrown out, and the game people had in mind at the start of development is almost never what comes out at the end. Standardized tools like FMOD and WISE, among others, allow your audio team to iterate as fast as possible. Because there isn't a proprietary and obtuse system in place, they won't have to learn a new system with zero documentation. Instead, they can work with the thing that they already know how to use and have likely used in previous projects. They're freed up to create the best audio for you and the project with as little friction as possible. Allow me to share with you what I mean. As a heads up, all of the screenshots I'm showing here are from FMOD for visual purposes, but WISE can do all of this and more, and this barely covers 5% of what these pieces of software allow audio designers to do. And there are also plenty of other audio tools outside of these too. Firstly, when it comes to iteration, one of the most common things your composer or sound designer will do is replace their audio with improved upon versions as development goes on. Middleware like FMOD and WISE use what are called events to manage sound. This means we can easily replace the audio within an event without changing any code or needing to manually overwrite old files. The game will call the same event as before, but the newly replaced audio will play instead. It sounds wildly simple, but can save tons of time over the course of a project. Speaking of saving time, one of the most time-consuming aspects of working in game audio has to do with balancing all of the assets in terms of volume, what's playing when, and priorities, especially when there are potentially dozens of sounds playing at once. These audio software solutions allow audio designers to balance their audio not just on an asset by asset level, but in groups and even dynamically, allowing us to do things like making the music and ambient sounds quieter while a character is speaking. And to speak to the programmers and developers a little more directly, we can also change the audio compression settings on the fly and help with memory management by allocating different sets of audio to different banks that can be loaded and unloaded almost instantly. This allows us to keep what's needed in memory while discarding the rest very quickly and easily. We can even check how heavily we're loading the CPU with our audio at any given moment using tools like the Profiler. 
and we can tell what sounds are playing, and when, allowing us to test the audio to make sure it's playing correctly from the correct source. And this doesn't even begin to cover what can be done in terms of implementing music. All of this and so much more without bothering the engineering team very much at all. Before you ask, no, FMOD and Wise aren't horribly expensive, especially relative to the amount of hours they'll save you, your programmers, and your audio designers. Heck, depending on your game's budget, FMOD or Wise might very well be completely free for you and your team to use, even on games you plan to sell for a profit. Now, does every project need one of these two specific tools? No, but many more projects could benefit from using them. The odds are, if you're a developer watching this video, you should probably look into them, even though there may be some resistance to the idea. Are there times where making a totally custom solution is appropriate? Yes, absolutely. Should those situations be the norm? Yeah, probably not. So if you want your audio team, whether it be one person or 20, to be able to iterate effectively, create a great and balanced soundscape, and not bother the engineering team all the time asking for simple features, consider one of these options, or the many other pieces of audio middleware out there. The sanity of both you and your audio department may very well depend on it. Thanks so much, and as always, go pet a dog.